Egg yolk, how's it going with the best army in all of the cryptocurrency land, who I like to call the Chico Army. You should know my name, but if not, it's Tyler, aka Chico, aka the most based YouTuber who covers crypto. And today I'm excited to bring you that hopium for Bitcoin, because we're doing an episode of TA, not technical analysis, but Tyler analysis. So are you ready? You should also know our drill, because it's time for Chico Crypto. Technical analysis. For most people, especially YouTubers in this space, this consists of drawing a ton of lines on the screen which fits the narrative they are trying to portray. Line here, line there, line everywhere. There are so many different indicators out there that eventually you'll find a line that fits your narrative, which can only consist of three things. The price will pump, the price is going to dump, or the price is going to bounce around and go sideways. Now, I'm not necessarily hating on technical analysis. There are some good ones out there. But you should really have a wholesome view of the crypto markets. You should have a technical person you follow, have a fundamental person you follow, and have a Tyler person you follow. Because Tyler analysis is some of the best in the game. So what exactly is Tyler analysis? Well, Bitcoin is based on cycles due to something called the halving, where the supply of Bitcoin emitted to the miners is cut in half every four years. We've had three halvings every four years since Bitcoin has been created so far from 50 BTC per block to 25 to 12.5 to as of today, just 6.25 BTC per block. Thus, the scarcity of Bitcoin becomes very apparent due to this supply cut and shock to the markets that kicks off a price discovery cycle. So, Tyler analysis is about cycles and Bitcoin cycles usually last around four years. Three supply cuts equals three four-year cycles, and two of those have already happened, and we are currently in the midst of our third one. Under halfway there, with an estimated 947 days until we reach the next halving around May 9th of 2024. Now, each of these cycles have been different, not exactly the same, but they do share many similarities. But this cycle is sharing similarities most like the one that included 2013. The biggest similarity is in the last year of the cycle, there was a big old bear crash, a big old freaking bear trap, which happened around the same time of the year. Pulling out that cycle's chart of 2013, we can see Bitcoin had a big run up, just around $13 at the beginning of the year, which ran up to $230 by April 9th, 2013. And then that bear trap smacked the hopium right down to the ground. BTC crashed to around 66 bucks near three months later in early July, the 6th to be exact. This was a crash in price drawdown of over 71%. Now let's just take a look at what happened this year. Bitcoin started the year just under 20K and ran up to 64K by, wait for it, April 13th, 2021, just four days away from the peak in 2013, April 9th. And then, like clockwork, the big old bear trap smacked our hopium down once again. BTC crashed from 64K down to a low of 29,800, a crash and burn of just over 53%. When did this low happen? July 20th, 2021, just 14 days away from the low in 2013, which was on July 6th. Just how convenient are those dates? And the drawdowns are pretty close too. But some of you may be saying, but Tyler, that is still 18% away. 2013 crashed by 71%. Well, you guys need to realize that as time goes on, Bitcoin gets less volatile. The time in between those two cycles, 2013 to 2021, is eight years. Bitcoin isn't going to pump as much, which is seen from the starting point in the Januarys to the April highs. 2013, BTC went from $13 to 130 in between that time, a 17.6x. And then 2021, BTC went from about 20K to 64K, just a 3.2x. Thus, a smaller crash into the last year of this cycle's go-around just makes frickin' tellin' sense. 
friggin' tell it! You know what else I'm friggin' telling you? We are about to go on another run, a parabolic one, because the more things change, the more they stay the same. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Expanding out the 2013 chart, we can see the price pushed up from that July $66 low and into early September it peaked near $130, a pump of nearly 97%. But then by the end of the month, there was a big event that happened that dropped it under $100, a crash of 23%. What was the reason for this crash? There was a FUD storm that hit the markets. The Silk Road, the online marketplace for buying drugas, got seized by the US government officials, and it officially went down. Ross Ulbricht went on trial today. The jury will decide a case that could impact the future of internet privacy. The markets panicked, as many believed buying drugas was the sole use case for Bitcoin, and it had been nixed out. But everyone knows now, and they knew back then, that buying Drugas isn't the sole use case. Now pulling out this cycle, like clockwork, Bitcoin bounced from the July low of 29,800 to an early September peak, once again early September, of about 51,800. This was a pump of nearly 74%. But then the bearish September took over, and by the end, a big crash once again, which took the price down to about $40,000, a crash of 22%, which once again took place at the end of the month. Although this time the crash was caused by China, coming in and banning Bitcoin once again. Another FUD storm, just wrapped up in different paper. And once again, these cycles moving by showed that they constrict as time goes on. The pump and dump in 2013 was more than this cycle in 2021. Pump of 97% 2013. Pump of 74% in 2021. FUD dump of 23% in 2013. FUD dump of 22% in 2021. And now let's just jump back to 2013 and expand out that Bitcoin chart further to the end of October. What do you think happened? Parabolic run and that Silk Road dump was left right behind. By the end of the spooky month, Bitcoin pushed back to $200 from the $100 low, a 100% gain, 1xing in just a month. Now I'm sure you have heard of Plan B, the creator of the S2F model for Bitcoin, which has been scarily accurate regarding the price. Well, Mr. B tweeted his S2F model and some monthly price predictions in June of this year. He was correct with August 47K. He was dang close with his September 43 call and his October prediction is calling for Bitcoin to hit 63K. So what would be the percentage increase from the September low if that happened, we hit that number? Well, we hit around 40K in late September to 63K, that would be a pump of 57.5%. Sounds reasonable to me, especially since the pump in 2013 was 100%. Besides this year, I'm sure most of you have heard the news that October is usually very bullish for Bitcoin. That is true, as out of the eight years since 2013, BTC has been green six of those, and already is green this year, or starting it out good. But if we took the averages of those eight years, 2020 to 2013, it would be an average gain in October of just 22.3%. If we followed this, Bitcoin would only reach 49,000 by the end of the month. Although this year is special, it can only be compared to two other years based on the cycles, 2013 and 2017. And if we took the average of just those two months, the percentage gain in October would be 54.3%, putting us right near 63K, Plan B's prediction. Now there are other indicators too, more technical and not cyclical ones that point to 2013 being just like this year, 2021. There is an indicator called the Pi Cycle Top Indicator, which is pretty dang spot on calling Bitcoin tops. The indicator uses a 111 day moving average and a 2x multiple of the 350 day moving average to predict market tops. When the 111 day moving average orange line crosses above the 2x 350 day moving average green line, it's a signal that the top is in. 
And as we can see throughout Bitcoin's history, it's been very reliable at calling the tops or being extremely near. Now zooming into 2013, we can see when the bear crash happened in April of that year, the indicator flashed. It was wrong though, for that cycle, that wasn't the top. It came at the end of the year, when the indicator flashed again. And now pulling out this year, we can see the pi cycle indicator during the April bear crash flashed, and the 111 day MA has fallen under. But as we can see, as of the last month, it has been trending back towards the green, the 2x 350 day MA, which signals another top might just be coming. And now, switching those gears, I have something very special for the Chico Army. The launch of an NFT series by Blockchain Leaks NFT contributor and artist Full Metal Magdalene, who is the artist for the first NFT shirt, which will coincide with the BC Leaks launch happening soon. The NFT series is called Crypto Sluts. Them sluts and Full Metal is giving away 111 of the NFTs to those that help her out and grow her presence. And I have the first leak of what these crypto sleut NFTs will look like. All the popular cryptos on the tongue of some sluts in pill form. And to qualify to get one of these, you will need to number one, like and share and comment hashtag Chico Army on the contest promo post on the Crypto Sluts Twitter. It'll be the pinned post there. Number two, follow at Crypto Sluts NFT and at full M3TAL mag on Twitter. And number three, join the Crypto Sluts Telegram, which is at t.me slash Crypto Sluts NFT. The winners will be selected on October 15th when the collection drops. She will choose them using a randomizer and record the process. After they are selected, she will check and make sure the people who won all meet the qualifications and then will DM the winners for their wallet address to send the NFT to. And all links for the qualification steps are below. Who doesn't like a good salute? I know I do. Cheers. I'll see you next time.